All right then gang, so now I wanna take what we've learned about Dino so far and create a simple API using a third party package called ABC, right here, this package. Now, most tutorials about Dino on YouTube at the minute seem to be using the Oak framework, which is pretty cool as well. And that's also a Dino third party module, but I thought I'd use a different one just to break the trend. And I'm using ABC instead, which is also very good in my opinion. So both of these frameworks help us to create Dino apps and APIs, a bit like how Express helped us in Node. Now, you don't have to use them, but it does make setting up a server and handling requests a bit easier. If you are familiar with Express, then this is gonna be a breeze for you. If you're not, then feel free to check out my Node Crash Course where we build an app with Express and then come back. But anyway, let's figure out all this and create an API with ABC. So the first thing we need to do is grab this import right here. So I'm gonna copy that. That imports the module and in particular, it imports this thing from the module application. And that's what we use to set up a new ABC app. So let me go back to our code and I've deleted all of the other files and created a new one called app.ts where we'll create this application code. And I'm gonna paste in this import at the top. So now we need to create a new app instance by invoking this over here. So let's do this down below. And we store this app instant in a constant. I'm gonna call it app. And then I'm gonna set it equal to a new application like so. So now we have an instance of an ABC app. Now, the next thing we need to do is start up the server and listen to a port. So let me just do a little comment first of all, listen to port. And the way we start this app up and start the server is by using a method on the app given to us called app.start. And then we can invoke that. We pass in an object where we can specify the port and I'm gonna set that to be 3000. So that's it, that's how simple it is to set up this app and also run the server and listen to a port using this method. So now let me come over here and I'm gonna cancel out of the previous process and I'm gonna say Denon and then I'm going to say run and we want to allow network access but also in the future file access as well. So I'm gonna say allow hyphen read so we can read files. We'll need that when we're reading HTML files and sending them to the browser. And also I'm gonna say allow hyphen net for network access too. And then we wanna say app.ts. So press enter to run that and now hopefully we have this server up and running. So it's now essentially listening for requests and if we were to go to localhost over here, then we can make that request but we're getting a status code of 404 back and this error message saying not found. And that's because we're not actually handling this request yet. Yeah, we're setting up this server but we're not handling the request. We're not responding to it. So let's do that. So I'm gonna do another comment down here that says routes, and I'm gonna set up a route handler. Now the way we do that is we take our app instance and then we can use a method called get on it. Now again, that's very similar to express. We use get methods on our express app instances to respond to get requests, and that's what we're gonna do here. So we're taking two arguments into this method. The first one is whatever request URL we want to respond to. So for example, just forward slash means I want to respond to just this address right here, just forward slash, and that's the root of the domain. So we're gonna to respond to that by passing in a second argument, which is a function which fires when we get a request to this URL. Now this function is gonna be an asynchronous function. So let's say async first of all, and inside here, we can open up our curly braces and then do something. So for example, we could say console.log and request made, okay? So let's just see if this works so far by saving this. It reruns the server and then back over here. If I refresh, we should see now request made, but we're still not sending a response to the browser. So. Ideally, I wanna send an HTML page to the browser. So I'm gonna to have to create an HTML page first of all. So let me create a folder called public and eventually all of the files that are gonna be made public to the browser will live in here. So things like CSS, maybe HTML pages and maybe front end JavaScript, that kind of thing. For now, I'm gonna create a file called index.html. And inside this file, I'm going to just do a very, very simple HTML document. And the title is gonna be index page. And down here, we'll do an H1 that says 
index page as well. And that's all I'm going to do. Very, very simple. But this is the HTML page I now want to send back to the browser when this callback function is fired, when we make a request to this thing right here, a get request. Okay, so let's delete that and instead figure out how we can send an HTML page back. Well, first of all, inside this callback function, we get access to a context object. So let me say CTX right here. And this is a special type, which is a context type. So if I press enter on that, it's going to automatically import it from ABC for me. So now on this context object, we get access to several different methods that we can use to send responses back to the browser. So I'm going to say down here await because this is an asynchronous task. And then I'm going to take that context object and use a method on it called file. Now, before I do that, notice these are all the different properties and methods we have access to on this context object. Like I said, I'll use one called file and this sends a file back to the browser as a response. So all I need to do is pass in here a path to that file. So that's going to be dot forward slash to say the current directory, then into the public folder and then forward slash index dot HTML. So hopefully this is all quite self explanatory. We're making a get request to this URL. Then we're firing this function. We pass in the context object, which ABC gives us automatically that contains information about the request and also gives us access to methods which we can use to send a response. We're using this method right here, file to send a file back to the browser, this HTML page. And also we're using this await keyword because this is an asynchronous task. OK, so let's save that and give this a whirl. Come back over here and refresh. And now we see that HTML page right there. OK, then, so now what if we wanted to add a style sheet to this index HTML page? Well, let's try this. Let's first of all create a new file inside the public folder called styles.css. And inside that file, I'm just going to paste in a couple of rules. So first of all, I'm giving the body a background color of a light gray and a font family of Arial. Then the H1, I'm saying the color should be indigo. All right, so let's link to this from the index page over here. So link tag and the href is just styles.css. So is this going to work in the browser? Well, let's try it out. I'm going to go to localhost, refresh, and it doesn't do anything. And if I inspect and go to the network tab over here, we're going to notice if I refresh now, we're going to see that we get a 404 error for styles. And if I try to access styles, dot CSS, then we get a 404 error there as well. Now that's because by default, ABC and Dino is blocking that request for the style sheet. It doesn't allow users access to any files on the server automatically for security reasons. And we have to explicitly tell ABC which files should be given access to from a browser. And these files are known as static files. So I'd like it so that all of the files inside this public folder, they are accessible from the browser. Now, in order to set this up, we have to use a static method, just like we did in Express when we're working with Node.js on our app. So we can take this app right here. Let me come down here and do a comment, first of all, saying static files. Then I'm going to say app. Use the method called static on that. Now, this takes in two arguments. The first argument, which is a string, this is the path that we have to use to request the static files. Now, what I'm saying here is just forward slash, and that means they should be requested at the root of the domain. So for example, localhost 3000 forward slash, then whatever asset that we want to grab or file we want to grab from inside the public folder. So that's the first argument. The second argument is where should these be served from? So we want to say, well, they're in the public folder. So I'm going to say dot forward slash for current directory, then go into the public folder like that. So now if we try to access any files inside here, we can do on the root of the domain. We're giving the browser access to them now. And that's how simple it is. So let's try this again. If I come over to the browser and refresh, we should see that this is now styled because we have access to anything inside the public folder. And if I just try to access it directly, I can do by going to forward slash styles.css and we get that styles file back. Awesome.
So then that's the basics out of the way. We've got this app set up, but now in the next video, let's set up our routes and controllers for this API.